Now this is what I'm talking about. I finally got my hands on this beast of a power station. I've been waiting to review this for a long time. This is the Bluetti AC200 Max, and this just kicked it up a level, and we're gonna talk about why. The thing is, most of the units that I've reviewed so far has been 1,000 to 2,000 watts. It's perfect for the overnight power outage. You've got a couple days max, but not much more past that. And that was because most of the units, the solar input, it just wasn't that high. I think the max that we had was 500 watts with the Ocotel. But this unit takes it to the next level, and that is because it has the capability to expand or scale up to four times its original capacity. So let's talk about what makes this unit stand out, who would use it, what you could use it for really, what it's capable of, what it's not capable of, and I'll go over all the specs so you have all the information in this video, you don't have to hop around and watch three to four different videos. So the number one thing that makes this stand out, I already hit on it, is it's expandable. I love that. Modularity, you can add to it. You can just use the base unit. You don't have to have the additional batteries that you can add to this. You can add just one if you'd like, if you just want 4,000 watt hours and not six or eight. So you have options here. They made two different size batteries to allow you to configure it to whatever your needs are. And the other main thing to consider here when looking for a power station that's going to take care of powering your needs for an extended period of time is the ability to charge this thing with solar. So this has a 900 watt input, and that's almost twice as much as all the other units that I've reviewed. So that's going to give me more options when it comes to maxing out my solar input and putting as much power into this as possible. The third thing I really like about this unit is the inverter. It's an extremely efficient inverter. It's at 88% efficiency from most videos that I've seen, and I've seen the same myself. And this specific inverter is gonna give you 2200 watts, pure sine wave. It goes up to a surge 4800 watts. So it's gonna be able to power most of the needed appliances, the necessary things that you're gonna need in a power outage or a grid down situation. So I would say you're getting more serious when it comes to preparedness with a unit like this, rather than a 1000 watt that's gonna get you through a night or two. You're gonna be able to use this for an off-grid setup. You could lug this around in your RV, it's got the RV output right here, but you would be able to use this to power a cabin if you need to. You don't have a ton of massive appliances that's gonna require this to just work overtime 24 seven, like a central furnace or an AC unit that's you know, 20, 40,000 BTUs. This isn't gonna be able to handle that. But for the smaller home, a cabin, you're going off grid, a base unit like this is going to give you a lot of options. And then you could, if you needed to, get the extra batteries. So most, if not all of the appliances, aside from the larger furnace and AC systems, this thing is gonna be able to handle. And I always like to remind folks, you gotta be realistic, right? Just because this has the ability to power a 10,000 BTU central air unit doesn't mean that it's gonna do it forever. If it's pulling 2,000 watts, this only has 2,000 watts, unless you've got the extra batteries, you've got maybe an hour of runtime max. So going over some of the specs, you're looking at the inverter here being 2,200 watt AC output. You're gonna have a 4,800 SIRS. So this is gonna be able to handle quite a bit. The battery itself is 2,048 watt hour capacity, so just hitting over two kilowatts. With this being a lithium iron phosphate battery, you can expect around or above 3,500 zero to 100 charge cycles of the battery. So that doesn't mean it's just gonna stop at 3,500. It means that it's gonna be at approximately 80% of the original battery capacity from when you bought it if you charge this thing 3,500 times. These batteries tend to last between 10 to 15 years, depending on how you treat them to. And with the two types of batteries that Blue Eddy sells as of now, this unit could be expandable up to 6,144 watt hours if you use two of the B230 batteries, or 8,192 watt hours if you use the B300 batteries. So there's actually seven ways you can recharge this unit. And that is using the AC, solar, car, a generator, a lead battery, dual AC, or fast charge, which is using the AC and solar input. And I'll show you how to do that. You're looking at 900 watt 
max input from solar as we touched on earlier and you can get up to 1400 watt input to charge this battery if you do the fast charging with the AC and the solar. You also have an app that you can use similar to the EcoFlow. It's not gonna have as many options, it's not gonna be as configurable, but you're gonna have the basics and I'll go through the app in a minute. With this unit, you're looking at two year warranty. So it's not as good as the EcoFlow, which is a five year warranty, but it's pretty typical. And one big thing to consider here, this is 62 pounds. This unit here, we're not talking the expandable batteries, nothing, this is 62 pounds. So unless you are able to pick this thing up, you are gonna need two people or a dolly to carry this around. It's not gonna be very portable. That's just one of the prices you pay getting a lithium iron phosphate battery. You're getting a massive amount of charge, potentially 3,000 more charge cycles than the typical standard lithium ion batteries, but they're gonna be much heavier. So going over the AC specs, you're gonna have four 120 volt 20 amp outlets, one 120 volt 30 amp NEMA TT30 outlet, and those are rated at 2200 watts, pure sine wave, surge power of 4800 watts. You have a single USB-C port, and that's a 100 watt max output, four USB-A ports, two of them being five volt three amp, and the other two being 18 watt output. You have a few DC outlets, one of those being the RV output at 12 volt 30 amp, another being a car outlet at 12 volt 10 amp and you'll have two 12 volt 10 amp DC 5521 outlets all regulated and what's really cool is on this unit you have two 15 watt wireless charging pads for a cell phone etc you've got the expandable battery ports here you can plug in a max of two batteries and that is either the b230s or the b300s so you're going to have cables that will attach this to the other batteries you can stack this on top of those batteries at that point, this gives you those options there. You're gonna have the AC 500 watt input here. I see an input of typically 460 watts, uh, which is still gonna charge this unit in four and a half hours. So it's not the best or the fastest charge. I actually prefer slower charge because I do not wanna put that stress on the battery. Some of these units will just supercharge the battery. I want this to last as long as possible. So if I needed to charge this faster in a pinch, I would be able to do the fast charge and that's with the solar and the AC. Now as for the solar input, you're looking at again, 900 watts max, VOC, 10 to 145 volt DC, 15 amps. And that's gonna charge this in as little as two to three hours with the max solar input. And you're gonna connect that right here with these adapters. So this is going to allow you to plug the DC input into the unit itself. So this will connect here. And then you have your MC4 connectors for solar and the car outlet connection. So if you had to get a charge from your car, you would be able to use this. So the app is pretty straightforward. You have a list of all the Bluetti devices that you have. You can go into this device you can turn on the AC or the DC, and you're gonna be able to see your inputs on the left from your photovoltaic or solar and your grid, so if you're connected to the AC, and you're gonna have your DC and AC wattage. I like the breakdown of this. You can go into your battery pack. If you have multiple batteries hooked up, one or two, you would be able to see the state of charge and the status of those batteries as well from this screen. So it's not gonna be as many options as let's say what EcoFlow gives in their apps. You can't limit the minimum state of charge or the maximum state of charge or how fast this will charge with AC for example, but this does handle the basics. So ignore the mess. Um, I've got a sump pump here. I filled this up with a few extra gallons of water so I don't burn out my pump when I try this. I wanna be able to see if this will power the sump pump as one of the things we're gonna do just to show the power in this unit. This is something that I would plan to use this unit for in the event of a power outage and I had to keep my sump pump running. Plug it in. So that's going at about 900 watts. So that's pulling 890, 892 watts to run that sump pump. And this unit's gonna easily be able to handle that. So that's not even half of what this inverter's capable of. So this thing can obviously handle a sump pump. So let's take it outside and let's push it to the limit. 
So for this test, I'm gonna run this heater, this air compressor, and I'm gonna actually charge another unit. So this is gonna take over a thousand watts, about actually 1100 almost. This will take about 250 to 300 if I'm not mistaken, and this will pull the rest. We're gonna go to about 2400 watts from this unit, and we'll see how long this lasts. So we're pulling 1280 watts right now with just the heater alone. This should push it over 2200. So I did get an alert out of the unit, but it kept going. There's no al alarm stored. So I was pushing this over the recommended amount, the rated amount, but it did not cut off on me after a minute of use. So pretty impressive in my book. And what we have here is the PV200. And this is the 200 watt solar panel that Blue Eddy sells. They have other sizes as well, but this is the one I have. So I'm gonna set this up. On a very cloudy day, I'm about to show you how cloudy it is. There's barely any sunlight coming through. I'm still getting something going to charge the battery here from the panel. So let's get some power going to the unit with the solar, and then we're gonna ultra fast charge this. If I had 900 watts, it'd be ultra fast. This is only 200, and I'm probably gonna get 20 watts with the cloudy day. I'm gonna hook up the AC2 to show you how you would fast charge this unit. So at this point, I'm using the AC adapter to put 500 watts into the Blue Eddy while also inputting as much wattage as I possibly can from the sun, which is, as you can see, very limited today. So obviously, this would be a higher input if I had more solar panels to pull from the sun and if it was a sunnier day. But this is just a good example that not every day is going to be sunny. You have to plan for the worst when it comes to the weather, ensuring that you're not going over on the voltage limitations of the power station itself. You're gonna to wanna to over panel this if your situation calls for it, and of course, if it's even feasible for you. So for the cost of the unit, you're looking at $1,899. It's actually on sale at $1,799, which is where I typically see it. You can use practical as the coupon code, I'll put it in the description as well, but it actually doesn't apply because the thing's already on sale. So if it comes off a sale and you got to it a little late, you could look at using that coupon, it could give you some money off as well. But this unit in and of itself, it's a great unit. This is gonna be a powerhouse that you're gonna be able to power significantly more devices for longer periods of time if you get the expandable batteries. Without the batteries, you still have a solid unit, a solid inverter. You're gonna be able to power most of what you'll probably need to power during a power outage. If you need more, go with the AC300 or look at the AC500. You're just gonna be going up in price. But do you need this if you have another power station? If you have something between the 1,000, 2,000 marker, you have something smaller and it meets your needs. No, you don't need this then. But if you are like me and you want the ability to expand, if you ever have to, this thing's not gonna go out of date or out of fashion in the next 10 years. This battery's gonna last you a long time time. So you will have the option to upgrade your setup if you find yourself needing more power down the road. All right, folks, that's it for the video today. I hope you liked it. I hope it gave you insight on what this thing can do. And I'll catch you on the next one. Another video come out in a couple days. Stay safe, stay practical.